Hi guys, uh, Mr. Bennett here. Today we're going to be looking at graphing and uh, that's a really important part of um, the calculus bit because everything that we do actually requires to look at those graphs and we, as I was sh sort of showing you in a, a lesson in class, we talked about the graph being essential to everything that we do. So the first question we look at here today is classify the points A, B, C. Okay, so we'd say B goes to a local maximum C is a horizontal inflection point, and it's horizontal because if you start looking at where the tangent is there, the tangent would in fact be horizontal, and A is in fact a local min. All right, so they're the classif classifying those points. Draw the sine diagram, part B. So I was going to draw a sine diagram, and this is a sine diagram for, um, will be for F dash, that's what we normally do it for, and that will be for X, then that would be B, C and A. Now if we looked at the slope of the tangent at that particular point there, we would know the tangent's going positive. So therefore it's going to be plus. Here the slope of the tangent's going to be negative. And again it continues to be negative. So that there is why we have an inflection point. And then over here is in fact that. It means it's positive, so therefore we have a local min. All right, so you can get the shape of the particular curve by looking at just the sine diagram. You know it's increasing there, you know it's decreasing there, and continues to decrease, and then it goes up. All right, so you get the shape of your curve from your sine diagram, a little checker. Now, if we look at places where it's decreasing and increasing, increasing means the slope of the tangent is positive. Well, that's there, and then it's over here where it's increasing and it's decreasing for this section in here and there. Now keeping in mind, at those two turning points, it's actually not increasing or decreasing. So if we're looking at the increasing bit, well it's increasing when uh, x is greater than, x is greater than 3, and it's decreasing when x is less than or equal to negative 2. Not equal to, but less than. And we'd say it's decreasing for when x is greater than negative 2 and less than 3. All right, so um, I think that hopefully makes sense. Now, with this whole chapter, what they would like to do is they're going to teach you every little bit of skill as you go. But we're going, going to the big question finally. And so we're going to do all of these parts here. So if I get given my um, function, we'll do f to start with. So I have to classify all the stationary points, all the points for f dash. They're all my stationary points are horizontal points. The first thing you must do to do is derive it. Uh, f of x equals 4x cubed. Take 12x plus 8. Now, my stationary points occur... points occur when f dashed of x equals 0. So in other words, what I want to do is I want to factorise that. Okay, so in other words, 4x cubed take 12x plus 8 equals 0. I want to find when those stationary points occur. Now, the first thing I would probably suggest that you do with any of these functions, um, if I just uh, quit from there, Um, <clears throat> obviously I've been testing this out to see if it works. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my y equals. I'm going to put that function into my calculator and I'm going to graph it. Now obviously I had to play around with window but I know I'm looking for a function that has three turning points because it's to the power of four. So that's my min and that inflection point counts for two turning points. So that's I know is my function what it looks like. I'll just take a screenshot of that and I'll paste that into my uh, document so we can talk about that afterwards when we have to graph it. Um, and Alright, so that's what I know my function is. It's not a mystery. Okay, You should know what your function looks like. You should know what you're looking for. Now, if I'm really having trouble, I could see that I'm having my turning point at negative 2 and I know my inflection point's at 1. But, to confirm that, 
And if we go to a cat card into our app, down to Polysim 2, that will do the same thing for us and confirm. So it's all about making sure we get it right. So we're doing Polysim number one. Uh, we are looking for a cubic. In terms of once we've derived it, so we're going to go to the next bit. We do want to make sure that's on real if we can, right? And then we're going to put the values in. So the x cubed term is four, the x squared term is zero, the next term is minus twelve, and the next term there is eight. And then once we put that in there, it's just a matter of now pressing solve. It will find the roots for us. So it's negative two, and one and one are the the two roots. All right, so. It's okay now to come back to my thing over here and you can now say over here because we don't give marks for factorising uh, so therefore you could say x is equal to negative 2, 1 and 1. Now the must do thing here is to do the sign diagram f of f dashed of x okay and that's x and so you've got negative 2 there and you've got 1 here now keeping in mind I've got my graph sitting there so the sine diagram becomes actually ridiculously stupid All right? so I know it's decreasing there so it's going to have a negative tangent there it's increasing there so it's going to be positive there and positive there and that's the way you do it now the other way of doing it this is the old-fashioned way before we had graphic calculators would be to say, oh, that's going to be, oh, I mean, I would probably put that value in here, put, say, negative 10 into this equation here, and I'd see if I get a positive value or a negative value. i put 0 into here and see what I get. I get positive value. Put say, 100 into there and see if I get a positive value. But because you've got your graph there, I think it's really, that's what we should be using to do that. So that's classifying my stationary points. Now, this is why using your calculator is really important. So I know I've got a local min. I've got a local min at negative 2. What's the y coordinate? Well, I'm going to go to my calculator. <coughs> Just quit out of there. So I go to the main menu and 6. And I'm going to graph that. I'm going to use my value. So I'm actually going to put my value of, so you do number one, negative two. All right, it tells me it's negative 27. All right, so I don't have to waste time using any algebra or anything like that. I can just go straight and use my calculator. All right, and we've got a stationary inflection. Inflection. At one and quite clear you can see it's zero there but if you go to your curve again I can go to my cut button really useful button and put in zero and it will tell me oh it's actually not one it's negative three okay so you've got to check it make sure it's you're not you're not uh, doing the wrong thing all right so I'll just better make that correct all right so that's one negative three that's my horizontal inflection point now, the next bit I've got to do from that is I've got to do my second derivative. All right, my second derivative of my function. Remembering my function was 4x cubed take 12x plus 8. That's going to give me an answer of 12x squared take 12. All right, so obviously bring out a common factor of 12. That's x squared take 1. And so therefore that's going to be equal to x take 1, x plus 1. Alright, so obviously you're going to have your critical points again when f double dashed of that is equal to 0. Alright, so obviously 1 and negative 1. And this is my f double dashed uh, versus x. This is the old fashioned way of doing it. I would pick a value in each of these regions. All right? So I might go, well, what would happen if uh, x was equal to negative 5? Well, that would be negative. That would be negative. So that would give me a positive. Okay. Over here, I'd pick, say, 0. That's going to be negative. That's going to be positive. That's negative. 
I'm going to pick a value greater than 1, say 10 positive positive. And so therefore that's going to be positive. Now, with calculators, once you actually understand this, right, because that's convex to that point there, we would say that that actually is going to be positive. Because that's concave in that section there, it's going to be negative, and it's convex again, so it's going to be positive. Right, so you'll get that concept, and that's something that's going to come out in your investigation. Right, so we can say for that, uh, those points here, by the way, are inflection points where it changes concavity. So if we come up to what we had to do there, find and classify any points of inflection. So we do have a point of inflection, um, and it's at what we call a non stationary point of inflection. Non stationary. That means simply that the tangent's not equal to zero. In flexion at negative one, right, we know we've got a horizontal inflection at one, so we don't have to classify that again. And again, we go back to a curve, right, go to a calc button, and we oh, go to number one and we put negative 1 in there, and that will tell us our value, so it's negative 16. It does save a lot of time, so you really need to do it this way. And you know you're going to get the right answer as well. Alright, so that's my non-stationary inflection. I can now also describe places where it's actually increasing and decreasing. All right, so intervals where it's increasing and decreasing. So we'd say it's decreasing for this section here, and it's increasing for everything else, isn't it? Okay, All right, so we'd say um, the next part is increasing, decreasing for x less than uh, negative 2, wasn't it? All right, and it's increasing for x greater than negative 2. <coughs> now the concavity bit right, is basically, as I said before, you're looking at where that, when you're looking from this view going up that way, it's what we say concave, that's convex, and then it goes concave and con convex again. And you get that from your second derivative sign diagram. So we would say it's convex, For x less than uh, negative 1 and x greater than 1 and it's concave for x greater than negative 1 and less than 1. The last thing that you need to actually do is you need to better graph that function showing all these <coughs> key important bits. All right? So you need to draw your graph like that you need to label that as a local min. Oh, let's do it properly. All right, so you know you get a bit of an idea. So I'm, it's going to be a sketch. It's not nothing um, to out there. It needs to be quite clear what you're doing. So we know it goes down here. It's got an inflection point over here somewhere. It goes up like that. So you have to label these points here. So that's a local min at negative 1, negative 27. That is a non-stationary inflection. Inflection, excuse my writing, at negative 1, negative 16. This here is a stationary inflection at uh, 1, negative 3. Okay, this is my x-axis. This is my y-axis on the f, f of x. Um, and you could probably even put a idea of the window there. That's say 10. That's say um, 5. <coughs> And obviously you've, you've got your scale there anyway. So that's the key thing I have to do when I'm looking at my graphs. Again, I find this ridiculously easy to do 
because all the information is there for me. And quite often, this is the thing that students don't do. And they lose, you know, for a graph. So what am I looking for when I'm actually doing a test? I'm looking for you to get the shape right. I'm looking for you to get the scale right. And then I'm looking for you to label all the important bits. Now, again, with a graphics calculator, which actually does it for you, all you're really doing is copying. So this is really like a copying section, easy marks in a test. Uh, in terms of these questions, I think, you know, uh, years ago when you didn't actually have a graphics calculator, you didn't know what it looked like. You had to just follow through, you know, your first derivative and your second derivative to do that. But nowadays, I mean, life should be really, really easy for you. So start with graphing it on your calculator, knowing what it should look like, and then using your graphics, graphics calculator to get all your points, okay, as you go along. Right, there's no marks given for you actually putting a value into the equation and then working out what the answer is. That's just a waste of time. Um, I'll do another video of another question, so um, I'll leave this, for, this one for now. Okay, see ya.